have you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves, your names, where you're from. I'm Erica. I'm from Pattonville in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Max, and I'm from Pattonville in St. Louis, Missouri. All right, well, Max and Erica, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank we you for are going me. to be, yeah, absolutely, we're going to be doing an activity here looking at different soils. And as we know, not all soils are created equal, they uh, vary in their composition. But it's something that's so important to farmers because the type of soil that they have depends on what type of crop they can produce. So, as you can see here, we have lots of different kinds and they have different compositions. So, what makes up a soil? There's three different particles there's sand silt and clay. So if we were to take soil underneath a microscope, you're going to see that those three particles are different sizes. So Max, you want to grab that volleyball. Erica, I'm going to have you grab the tennis ball and ping pong ball. And we're going to say that the volleyball represents sand. It's actually the largest of the three particles. And the tennis ball is going to represent silt. So if you compare the two balls, there's a big difference in size, right? And I am holding a ping pong ball, and that's going to represent clay. That's actually the smallest of the three particles. So there's sand, silt, and clay. And that's part of what makes up soil composition. Now you also have something called organic matter that can change your soil a lot. Does anybody have an idea what I mean by organic matter? Yeah, that's like healthy stuff. It's with... healthy stuff for the soil. Yeah. So technically, let's go ahead and set these balls down. Organic matter is plant, animal, and insect materials that have actually died and are decomposing. So as they break down, it's returning back to that soil, and it's that decomposition process that's adding nutrients back into the soil. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in our soil <laughs> here, guys. Okay, so we're going to start with our first one. We have soil from New Mexico, and I want you guys to feel it, get your hands dirty. Tell me what you guys notice about this soil from New Mexico. It's real mm -hmm. sandy, yeah, like we're down like at the sand. beach. Right, it's sand from the beach, right? Yep. So if you can tell, um, what do you guys all just notice about the color? It's really light. Light brown, like it doesn't get much rain, but a lot of sun. Right, so this, this soil is very light in comparison to, say, the soil from Iowa here. It's very, very sandy. Now, do you guys think you'd be able to grow plants very well in this? No. no, not very well. No, not very well, because sand has a hard time holding the nutrients in it. So if you wanted to grow plants in this, you'd actually have to add compost and fertilizer to it to amend it in order to actually grow, to grow a good crop with it. And so what we've done here is we've taken our jars where we've added the soil samples to it, added water, shook them up, let them settle, and over time, that sand, silt, and clay will separate from the organic, organic matter. So if you look at this soil from New Mexico, you're going to notice it's mostly all sand at the bottom there, right? Yeah. You have a little layer of silt, and then you have just a very little layer of clay. Now soil, it can be a bad thing if you have too much of one. So for example, if you had too much clay, clay likes to really hold on to the water, and it actually makes it difficult for the plants to get the water as they need it. So then it's separated out, and this soil sample actually is quite a bit of organic matter for such a sandy soil, I noticed. So yes, you would definitely want to amend it with some compost and fertilizer if you're going to grow plants in that soil. Now the next soil is Iowa. What do you guys notice about the soil from Iowa? Well, that's some real dirt right there. <laughs> it's real dirt right there, right? Yeah. How do you guys think plants would grow in this? Really well. well. Really well. So um, it's, it's good soil structure. There's quite a bit of sand, silt, and clay in here. Um, Iowa is one of the biggest crop producing states here in the United States. Shout out to Iowa. Shout man. out to Iowa. So they have some really, really nice soil. And if you look to see how it's separated, you can see a good layer. It's got a, it's got a nice thick layer of sand, but then you've got a lot of silt and just a little bit of clay up top. But if you look, there's quite a bit of organic matter as well, right? Yep. So that's good for the soil. It's a very nutritious soil. It's great for growing crops and vegetable gardens and things like that. So the next one, we're going to travel north. And this soil is from Alaska. So what do you guys notice about this? It's like Some wet sand. Wet sand. It's real, right. real sandy still. Yeah. Right. It's very, very sandy. It kind of reminds me, and it might be because it's partially wet, it kind of reminds me of like that kinetic sand that yeah. you can yeah. play with, mm -hmm. right? So it's very, very sandy soil. You can also have something called permafrost in it, which is soil that's been frozen over long amounts of time. And if you look at the jar here, you're going to notice that, so that sandy layer. It does have a little bit of silt and has a little bit of clay, but this sample actually doesn't have a lot of uh, big pieces of organic matter along the top of it. So you might want to amend it with some compost and fertilizer. And then also sometimes because of the colder temperatures up there, you need shorter growing crops because they don't have a very long crop season. 
And the next one, we're gonna get our hands dirty with this oh, one. Yeah. So I want you guys to dig in, don't be afraid. Um, this soil's from Arkansas. What do you guys notice about <laughs> this soil? It's real sticky. It's like, don't muddy. be afraid. It's like got clay. Paper towels to wipe your hands. It's like clay. So if you've ever yeah. played with clay before, um, this soil is going to remind you of clay for sure. What else though, do you notice about the color? It's, it's a light redder. Brown. Right. It's, it's got it's a like red a brown, tint. reddish tint. So it's got a reddish tint because they have some wetlands in Arkansas. The soil actually has quite a bit of iron in it as well, but it's really sticky, full of clay. Um, do you guys think crops would grow very well on this? No. no not you can do it. If it's your home, home personal garden, you might want to definitely add your compost or fertilizer to it. We mentioned cover crops earlier. If you were to put a cover crop over it, that cover crop is going to loosen up the soil where the old roots were. It'll make, new for the, it'll make room for the new crop to go in. So you definitely might want to consider that. And if you look to see how it's separated out here, we've got a layer of sand. You can see that in there. You guys notice cool. that? Yep. And look at this huge layer of clay compared to the other soil samples we've seen. Wow. And there's some wow. organic matter at the top, but you definitely would probably want to add some material to this in order to get um, some big crops out of it. And then the last one here is potting soil. Now, potting soil isn't something that you're going to dig up out of the ground. Uh, this is something that you're going to buy in a bag at your local store uh, for your home personal garden or potted plant, plants. My mom too, makes me carry those all over the yard. All right, well, that's <laughs> great you're helping with her, with the gardening then, but what does this remind you of? Mulch. Mulch type. Kind of mulch. There's some mulch. bigger twigs in it. Yeah. Um, you've got some vermiculite in here. So there's been additives added to this to help it hold water, uh, to uh, add air space to it, as well as... This is very nutritious. There's the right mix in there for that. So you're going to be able to get uh, really great plants out of your potted plants and things like that. But if you look at the jar, you're going to also notice it's separated out. But what do you notice about the top here? There is a ton what? of organic matter. There is a ton of organic matter. So like we said before, a lot of organic matter in the potting mix. So guys, I want to thank you guys so much for helping me out with this activity. Anytime. Yes, absolutely. And as you can tell, not all soil is created equal. The only way to know what type of soil you have at home is to have a soil analysis done. And even if the results come back poorly, you can always amend that soil with compost and fertilizer. Great. This is fun, guys. I, I'm a little jealous. I really, I saw this ahead of time. I'm going to start digging and playing around. But you I wouldn't never... get your hands yeah, dirty, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So before the show, Haley, these guys were picking out questions that they specifically wanted to ask you, questions from other schools and classes. So guys, are you right. ready? You want to ask yes. your questions? Okay. Go ahead, Max. Miss Kelly's class in Pennsylvania wants to know, is soil found near coastal areas different from soils found near non-coastal areas? Absolutely. So there's more than 75,000 different types of soil found in the United States. And so those are the, that are found near coastal regions are going to be different from soils, say, found in the Midwest. If they're near a coast, they're generally going to be more sandy soil. All right. Thank you. And Erica, you had a question too? Yes. Miss Gorby's class in Ohio was wondering, does all soil need to have bugs, worms, and humans to grow and produce vegetables? So bugs, insects, humus, all of that's needed for healthy soil. You're going to find that soil is a nat natural habitat for those. Um, you know, you're going to find worms if you dig up in soil. That's, they help aerate the soil. Those bugs and insects and all that fun stuff, that's what's going to actually help add more organic matter in the future. So as they die, decompose, that's going to add the organic matter and he help it be healthy soil there in the future. And actually, if you were to take one scoop of soil, you're going to find more microorganisms in it than there are people on Earth. Wow. So kind of a fun Ooh. fact. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Lots to learn here, yeah. Well, more questions come in. Um, Gina at Columbus Jewish Day School in Albany, Ohio, wanted to know how can a small school, they're, they're kind of small, they're starting out, mm -hmm. but they really want to know how can they practice environmentally sustainable uh, methods, especially regarding their soil. Okay, so even if it's a small garden, you're going to need to know what type of soil do you have. What is it lacking? So if it's lacking nutrients, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, you're going to want to find out how much and how much to put in there. So you get your results back, it's going to tell you how much, so you have healthy plants, you don't put too much or you don't add too little. Great. Okay. Well, the, the great news here is if you want to learn more, there is a free resource. You all can go ahead to this right after our show here. The scienceofsoil.com is where you'd like to go. And so uh, when you're there, you can go ahead to the Not All Soils Are Created Equal Digital Challenge, and it'll walk you through the different soils of the U.S. So it's broken out by regions, and it's an interactive map, and it highlights those different soil types, the soil makeup, uh, the crops that are best suited to each of the soils, 
the nutrients that are necessary for healthy plant growth. So all kinds of information, more learning that you can do at thescienceofsoil.com. Um, you can even sign up for updates and so forth. So if everybody, oh, I was going to ask you to come join me on the screen, but they, they snuck up right on me. <laughs> Guys, we wanted to thank you, first off, for being here. We've learned so much from each and every one of you. But we, I do have one more question. This is for the Bombkeys. Kathy, Brian, what's your favorite part of your job? I guess the favorite part just being my own boss, and Kathy lets me that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, <clears throat> Brian and I have talked about this several times. We absolutely love what we do. Um, we like working with our family. We like being able to plan for uh, the future farmers, our future, the farmers coming on the farm. And we just, it's, it's not just a job, it's a lifestyle, and we absolutely love that. Yeah, and we can... We can tell that you do. You're totally committed. I've been thinking about all the people that you invited here just today. So yes, this is, yes. This is great. Yes. You know, and we want to thank all the students for coming and learning with us today. We've had such a wonderful time doing this, and we just want to say thank you to all. All right. Thanks, thank guys. You. Have a good rest of your day. You. See you later.